take your meatloaf up a level you guys brown gravy it so delicious welcome back to Catherine's plates i'm Catherine. today i am going to show you how to make this delicious brown gravy meatloaf and it doesn't hurt to put that gravy on your fries or you can make mashed potatoes too all right let's go ahead and put this together okay let's go ahead now and start making our meatloaf in a large bowl i have one and a half to two pounds of ground chuck to that i'm going to add one onion that i have diced up now if you don't want to add onions to your meatloaf that's totally fine meatloaf comes in many different variations right okay got two eggs going in this will kind of hold the meatloaf all together i've got half a cup of milk give it some moisture okay now i'm using some panko crumbs this is a japanese style and this is kind of the box that i'm using right here these are very crispy and they hold well inside of a meatloaf so i'm going to be adding those now you can certainly use breadcrumbs or the italian breadcrumbs or even crackers if you want to do that i've used regular crackers and i've also put ritz crackers into a meatloaf and it's so delicious so i'm going to add that now to give this some flavor I've got some Parmesan cheese that I'm going to kind of grate in here. Very tiny, little grates here. This will add a delicious flavor to it. We don't want any boring meatloaf here. We're going to turn these into sandwiches tomorrow for leftovers, so <laughs> it's got to be good, right? My husband's all for the leftovers of meatloaf mm, on, that, right? you know, onto a sandwich. Okay, y'all comment down below. You know you love leftover meatloaf in a sandwich. Let me know. All right, that's looking good right there. And let's finish it off with two teaspoons of garlic powder. Now adjust the seasonings to your liking. All right, I've got, let's see, half a teaspoon. I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of some pepper. I'm going to put half a teaspoon of salt. And then I have about two tablespoons of dried parsley. I'm going to add that. All right, so I'm just putting on some gloves to do this. You don't have to. You can even use just a wooden spoon to mix this all together if you want. But this will be easy cleanup for me. All right, we're going to go in and mix everything together. Now make sure you, when you're mixing it up, you get a feel for if you need to add more breadcrumbs. Maybe you think it's a little too wet or maybe it's a little too dry and you can add a little bit more milk or maybe even add another egg to it. This is feeling really good right here. Give it a good mix first before you make that determination because you don't want to like keep adding ingredients because <laughs> it'll dilute all your flavorings that you have in there. You don't want to do that. Okay, at this point, I do have my oven preheating at 350 degrees. Okay, yep, that looks all nice and mixed up. I'm going to bring my pan over here. Okay, now I'm using a sheet pan that has a lip around it, and that will keep the juices inside the pan and not rolling around in my oven, okay? So I also put some parchment paper on here for easy takeoff of the meatloaf. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could just kind of spray it lightly. Okay, let's go ahead and put our meat mixture right to the center here. And then what you want to do is form it into a loaf. You don't want it too thick or it'll take too long in the oven. So, and just kind of make sure that it's even from one end to the other for even cooking. Yep, 
that's my oven preheated now if you have a loaf pan I have one but I prefer just to use it on here and freeform my meatloaf here but you can certainly use a loaf pan if you want to do that there we go okay so I'm gonna place this in my oven and bake this for about 45 minutes to an hour you just want to check it and make sure that it has an internal temperature of 160 degrees at least now if you don't have a thermometer you can just kind of cut into the center a little bit and make sure that there's no more pink inside okay about 15 minutes before this is done we're gonna start making the gravy so that's coming up next all right, I'm getting ready to put my french fries in the oven. These are what we're going to put our gravy over. Now, if you want to make mashed potatoes, you can certainly do that. Or smashed potatoes, whatever you want to do. Okay, let's talk about gravy for our meatloaf and our fries or your mashed potatoes, whatever you're going to use. Now, you can make homemade gravy, which is what I'm gonna show you right here, a really quick five ingredient gravy, or you can use like a jarred gravy if you want to, or you can use a little packet of gravy and just kind of jazz it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna turn our burner on to a medium high and start melting four tablespoons of butter. Okay, so my butter is nice and melted here. I'm going to add some onion. Now you can dice your onion or mince it really fine. Now I'm just going to use minced onion from a jar here just to make my life easy today. And you can certainly do the same. Probably about a tablespoon or so. Let that absorb the butter. And while that's happening, let's talk about our broth. Now I have four cups of broth here and I made mine from this better than bouillon beef flavor and it's so delicious if y'all don't have this you need to go find it it's so good when you're making soups but you can use like just regular beef broth out of a box or canned beef broth also if you want to do that all right so I'm just going to place this in here we're going to start warming it up Now what I'm going to do is take about two tablespoons, let's see, let's take about four tablespoons of that liquid out of here. Five, I'm going to do about six. Okay. Why not? Alright, I've got some cornstarch here that's going to act as our thickener. Now if you don't have cornstarch, you can use flour and that's totally fine. Let's go ahead and put about two tablespoons into here. I'm just going to use a whisk and just kind of blend that together. Now before I add the slurry, we're going to bring this to a boil. So make sure that your heat is on high. Pull mine up a little bit more. Now if you want to season this with some pepper, some garlic, you can certainly do that too. Okay, as you noticed, I did not put any salt in here because this bouillon right here is salty enough. So just be careful when you're seasoning when you're using the bouillon. Okay, we've got a nice boil going on there. I'm going to go ahead and take my slurry here. Mix it up again and just drizzle it in. All right, we're going to continually stir this for a few minutes until we get a nice thick consistency. Okay, my meatloaf came out of the oven. I let it sit for about five to seven minutes just to kind of let it solidify. And then I moved it onto a platter here. Okay, I've got my delicious brown gravy that I'm going to pour over my meatloaf. All right, that rest of that gravy is going for my french fries. Let's put some 
fresh parsley on top. Okay guys, what do you think? I'm gonna plate this up for you and give it a try. Hey guys, look at this gravy. Oh my gosh. See how thick that is right there? I'm gonna try it. Mmm. Boy, talk about taking your dinner plate to another level with homemade brown gravy. Tender juicy meatloaf. You saw that come together and very flavorful. Mm. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to take this plate and I'm going to disappear. <laughs> Y'all, I'm going to save half of this meatloaf and who doesn't like leftover meatloaf sandwiches? My husband does. So he'll be happy this week for that. <laughs> Okay guys, if you got some hamburger, I promise you, you have ingredients in your pantry to make this savory, delicious brown gravy meatloaf. Okay guys, give me a thumbs up on this one. Comment down below if you're new to my channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification so you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. I will see you on my next episode.